Welcome back to the Aussie Shed, ladies and gentlemen. Today we take an in-depth look at the 100mm chuck for the Chinese mini lathe. We're going to pull this sucker apart, clean it, have a look inside, make as many measurements as we possibly can on the thing, and anything else we can possibly find out. So stay tuned, and all will be revealed. Thank you. We might start disassembling this chuck, eh? She's pretty bloody horrible. I'll have to, I'll give it that. Let's get these jaws out first. It's really I don't know if you can hear it on the audio, but it's quite gritty. And there's a gritty and notchy. Turning this key here to get the jaws out. It uh, jams pretty much every rotation and Yeah. Very sharp. I imagine this is the same. There's probably probably no work being done on this to um, to tidy it up. But I'll get him apart. We'll clean all the pieces. We'll take a look at everything. We'll deburr anything if it needs it. Put it back together and see how it shapes up. This is a hundred mil chuck, by the way. These um one of the the benefits of these cheap ass machines is they do come with a 100mm chuck. Um, probably a shit 100mm chuck, but but definitely a 100mm chuck. Here's the, uh, the back plate. What that is. Oh, the grip. Oh. Instantly you touch it and it's just gritty. Oh, that's lovely, isn't it? Okay, here we go in there. Look at that. Lovely bit of gear. Not a lot of grease in there either. It's um as far as things go, that's that's pretty dry. There's just a bit of a bit of a bolt being probably put on these side gears and then turned in, but God, it's just this that's that's actually um a layer of grit that's sitting on there in that point you can just scrape it off actually it's it's rusty rusty gritty crap mmm all right let's keep getting this apart oh well onward and inward these grub screws around the outside they just hold these side gears in so when you take that out you can see it's just like a locking screw and then these just pop straight out. Uh, get all three of these out, then we can take the scroll out of the middle. So it's quite easy to, oh man, you can just feel the grid as you disassemble it, eh? Like everything gets as you pull it out. Quite easy to disassemble these chucks. Anyway. There's the scroll. God. Definitely hasn't been cleaned out after it was uh, machined or anything. Quite dirty inside there as well. Lots of burrs on all the edges. It's very sharp. And around where these holes have been. Been bored through there. Lots of sharp edges on it. We'll just give those a little bit of a touch up. One of the more labor intensive tasks with this machine has been deburring everything. Absolutely everything, every component, every housing, every little bit and piece has need deburring. Just a little bit of work in doing all that. Obviously stuff they're not prepared to spend the time on in China, which you know is part of the reason why these things cost what they do. Because, uh, you know, they're built down to a price point and you can't put any more labour than the absolute minimum necessary to sell them at that price point. So um, that's just passed on to the end consumer. And if you're prepared to do it well and good, and if you're not, you just got to suck it up, princess. Anyway, there's the bloody grub screws off the back. Might throw a bit of degreaser in this and start cleaning stuff up. I've just thrown a bit of degreaser in there with it so you can see what the degreaser looks like before we started. I've actually wiped all the 
all the grease and stuff out of the chuck just with paper towel um, just so that it gives us more of an idea of what's actually coming out of it the degrease is just a bit of a concoction of um, diesel and just a few other bits and pieces that I use I just keep it all stored in a drum and it's just what I generally run through my through my bigger parts washer that I have that's what the color is starting out as it's just sort of a goldy color and we'll see what it looks like when it fin when it's finished I'll clean all this up and I'll get the camera back on and here it is ladies and gentlemen after everything being cleaned up as you can see all the parts are sitting there on a bit of paper towel and this is what we're left with and all that stuff sitting in the bottom there that is grit so if you notice your mini lathe chuck sounds a bit gritty that's probably because of all the grit before i go any further with this while there's no jaws in it i might just measure this front face of the chuck and check how parallel it is to the mounting face on the back um, just for curiosity's sake we'll see what happens so I'll, I'll grab the surface plate and we'll just go and have a bit of a look at this let's have a crack at it eh? i've just zeroed it out on this position here i'll just run it around top of the this segment so far that's looking pretty good Not too bad at all. Not too bad. Alright, so I might just lift it, jump on, on the next section. I'll be as careful I can that I don't upset anything. Right, we seem to be dropping off a little bit here. Well, we've dropped off by about a one hundredth, one hundredth of a millimeter. That is, run it into the center. Yeah, slightly over one hundredth. All right. I'll just drop onto the next segment. Okay. We're maintaining that slightly low by one hundredth of a millimeter back into the middle yet yeah. so these two segments appear to be one hundredth lower than this one I'll drop it back onto the original one and see if it checks out again make sure nothing's moved yep there we go so that's still reading zero so we seem to have a one hundredth of a millimeter variation well it's where the indicator is zeroed out on and these two segments are reading about a hundred a one hundredth low Let's check it again that corner starts off about right and then as we move across it starts to drop away the centers all seem fairly consistent with each other with each segment so we're about a hundredth low again there jump there possibly a little bit worse unless i pull the indicator down but no looks like it drops down a little bit more than a hundredth in that position and it comes back up again and we jump onto our original piece. Oh. Well, we're back at zero. So we've got a little bit of variation there. One hundredth of a millimetre across the face of the, the chuck body. Well, I've got it here. I might throw the jaws in and take a couple of measurements. Hmm. See how that looks. So I obviously can't put any jaws in without actually rebuilding this thing. I'll give you a bit of a look at it now so here she is all the components all nice and clean I've um, I've actually done it twice I cleaned it the first time and then went over it all and deburred everything and then cleaned it again there were some very sharp edges on the outsides of these through holes all the all the t-slots 
all the edges of the t-slots were really really sharp all the tops here as well I've just got a um I've just got a, a small diamond file and just cleaned all of these up it was like I say it was very very sharp pretty tidy inside the machining is not great but it is it does look pretty tidy the pinions are really nice they look like they're very well made these pinion gears are definitely the nicest part of the chuck they're um they're nice bits of gear anyway the chuck jaws are quite terrible you um have a look at the the work that's been done the chamfering work or whatever you, i don't know what you'd call it it's not really chamfering work it's been done on these guys it's just horrendous So I've cleaned everything up and deburred including these. I, they were very rough along the bottom, so I've just lapped them a bit on the uh, diamond plate just to get the really rough, daggy uh, machining marks off the bottom of, of all the jaws. They've all been cleaned up along the bottom there. They all look a little bit tidy. The scroll itself isn't too bad. I've done the same on this. It was quite rough here on the top. You can probably still see some sort of gouges in it and whatnot. I've just had a bit of a lap on that with the diamond plate as well because it was so rough. It doesn't look too bad. Um, a few burrs on it that I've taken off. This gear. Yeah, it's not too bad. Machining on the inside is pretty good. But yeah, as you saw, it was full of shit. So the chuck's mostly assembled here. I've got the pinion gears and the main bevel gear in the bottom. Um, I've just assembled it with a uh, just this molly grease. For no other reason than it's just what I had sitting there on the shelf. Uh, it's probably a little bit, probably a little bit thin for this application. I prefer something that was a bit thicker. I'm a bit worried it's going to go flinging out everywhere. But uh, mate. That's all I had, so it's going to have to do, but it works pretty good now. A lot more grease in there than there was originally. No crunch. We'll get the rest of it back together and see what it feels like. Once it's all back together, it's uh, certainly a lot nicer to use than it was. It's quite smooth to use now. It actually feels like a chuck. It was just horrible before. Absolutely horrible. So, so I don't think that's going to uh, have any effect on its accuracy or anything though. Just possibly make it last a little bit longer I don't know whether this is actually going to end up seeing final duty on the mini lathe project when it's finished I may go to a 125 mil chuck I have a spare 125 mil chuck that normally resides on my rotary table so uh, I might either make or buy an adapter to mount it onto this we'll see anyway but this is a start So, I might just throw something in here, tighten it up, and then just take some measurements. So I just have an end mill in the center just to um, just to load the jaws up. And uh, we'll check these jaws first, and then we'll swap over to the other ones. And just see how the tops of them all relate, whether they're any good or not. 
So here we go, let's have a look at how these jaws shape up straight out of the box. Uh, I've just zeroed the indicator out on uh, this, the top of this first jaw. I'll just move across to the top of the next one. And that one appears to be about, it's about three one hundredths higher than the first one. And the top of that jaw is about four one hundredths higher. Okay, so at the moment, this one is our high spot, is our high. At the moment, this guy is the highest on that step. So we'll number them one, two, three, from lowest to highest. So, I'll start back on number one again. I'll go down onto this step. Alright, so there we are. We're set up on the, the middle step there. Roughly at zero. And that one is... Uh, it's about one and a half one hundredths. Let's see if this guy gets progressively bigger. It's about almost three one hundredths. So we've got the same issue here again. They're stepping up as it goes around. So low, medium, high. And uh, I'll drop down onto the bottom now. So I'm set up on the bottom step now, on the on the number one jaw that we marked with the with the sharpie, the lowest one. It's quite hard even to get a consistent measurement across the the top of the jaw. There's, you know, there's. Right, look at the amount of movement that we have in the indicator, just on that top surface. So I'll go around to number two anyway. All over the joint as you we've got zero there but then as we move across and towards the center it starts to increase that's our number three it's, it's not too bad it's probably fairly close to the first one so they're all in a couple of hundredths thereabouts but uh, you can see from that it's pretty crap really really the chuck needs to be um, set up like this and all those surfaces reground the the finish on them is pretty terrible too as you can see by the way the dial indicator jumps around so i'll swap these around for the other set and we'll see what sort of readings we get from those okay the other the other jaws are in now uh, i'm just set up over the the first one here it's quite hard to um, get a consistent measurement even just on the top of that first segment there. You can see we've got three one hundredths just in the very top of that, um, that jaw on its own. We'll spin across to the next one. Quite a variation in the top of that fella as well. You're looking at a variation of probably the lowest point down there is probably one and a half. And that's probably nearly three, so it's probably four and a half one hundredths. This one, new zero there. Oh geez, look at that. That's eight one hundredths diagonally across the top of that. Oh, seven and a half, eight, yeah. Yeah, oh, that's probably sitting on about oh, half. 
So it's about seven one hundredths just across the top of that face. They all vary so much. I guess I'll just go down onto the next level. So we're down onto the next step. That's that one there. On about zero. Go across here. I'll just let that drop down. I'm in a bit of a shit spot there. I'm carefully getting back up. That one's a tad low, <clears throat> tad low on the last one, depending on where you have it. Got two one hundredths. And that one is about three one hundredths. Lower than the first one. Go back to the first one just to make sure nothing's moved. Yep. So you can see the variation that we have between all the jaws on those steps. You can see I've got an end mill, a 12 mil end mill, uh, done up really tight in the jaw here just to simulate that it's uh, actually holding something. I know we'll check the bottom now. Right, so we set up on the bottom there now. Once again, it's hard to maintain a, a proper zero. It's jumping around about a hundredth, hundredth and a half maybe. It's going to be a little bit tricky to get onto the next step from here. Just don't want to move anything. Yeah, it's within a hundredth or so, depending once again on exactly where you are on the step you can see we're at zero there but if we shift across slightly we're at two one hundredths drop him off again go on to the last one so there we're roughly at zero that one's pretty good that's probably the best one so far uh, maybe not Man, they're just terrible. All right, back to the first one just to double check. Yeah, we're still good. So there you go. I hope that gives you a bit of insight into the standard 100mm chuck that comes on the mini lathes as far as what the condition of them is like inside and how they shape up when you take some measurements off them with an indicator. But anyway, knowledge is power, and there we have it. Well, that's it, just about wound up for the 100mm chuck on the Chinese mini lathe. And goddamn, folks, it looks like you really do get what you pay for. No! Thanks for joining me here in the Aussie Shed. Always a pleasure to have you here with me. If you like my content, remember to like and subscribe. It really helps me out here on YouTube. And as always, thanks for watching. Cheers.